Hi, and welcome to the Ken Park and Real Estate Podcast, where we talk all things real estate, business related, and really anything happening in your life. If you've got a few minutes, we'd love to have you sit back, relax, and enjoy what we have to offer. Good Wednesday morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome back to another episode of the Ken Park and Real Estate Podcast. Want to dive in today to a few things that have happened over the last couple of days. Um, you know, as I bring this podcast to you, it's a podcast that's evolving and I don't want it to be specifically about uh, real estate, but I want to tie what I talk about back to real estate and more importantly, how it affects you and your current uh, living situation, your real estate uh you know, wants and needs, what you're thinking about uh, doing with potentially moving or staying where you are, refinancing your mortgage, potentially making some larger purchases and how that's going to affect you and your everyday situation when it comes to real estate. So wanted to talk to you today about a few things that uh, have happened and are happening um, as, as time progresses and things happen towards the end of this year. We had a huge uh, significant uh, thing that happened last night, event that happened last night in the United States that does affect Canada, our economy and, and our real estate economy. And that was the U.S. Uh, midterm elections. Uh, the Republicans did come back and uh, I believe that they're going to have uh, a limited amount of power now because the uh, Democrats took the House and so the uh, the the Republicans aren't able to have and particularly President Trump isn't able to have as much power uh, as he has he's as he's had basically they can put previous to this they could push through anything they wanted and that's why when we were dealing with things like NAFTA um, which is the trade agreement between, or was the trade agreement between the U.S., Mexico, and Canada? He was able to pull out of that, do their own deal with Mexico, and then bring Canada to the table and basically strong arm us into their uh, what they wanted. Uh, and so, I don't. I'm not here to talk politics in terms of uh, you know who I support or or my views necessarily on the U.S. or Canadian political scene. But what I do want to talk about in regards to politics is how it affects us here in Canada and what's going to happen at least for the next couple of years until elections take place again in 2020. And you know it's amazing to see there is a lot of negative views towards Trump in the media. But the voters kind of spoke both towards the Democrats and the Republicans. Republicans got an extremely strong showing. A lot more women came out to vote, which seemed like they they did end up voting more um, Democrat than Republic Republican. Um, but a very strong showing for the Senate race in the U.S. and both from the Republican and Democratic side. How it affects us up here in Canada is gonna probably uh, remain to be seen a little bit, but Trump, uh, President Trump and the Republicans can't you know, basically go crazy now with respect to doing what they want. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more checks and balances for them to push through uh, any kind of legislator, legislature. I think that, and I'm not a, uh, uh, an expert on U.S. politics, but doing some research, it looks like they're going to be short about 60 votes that they need to basically filibuster any Democratic uh, you know, pushback. And so really, the president and the Republicans can, can push through legislature, but then that legislature can be tied up and voted on a bunch of times before anything happens. So... It's probably going to bring some calm, my opinion, to uh, a lot of markets around the world. Trump now is going to be more of a talking point. He's going to have more of a voice, uh, not more than what he's had, but his. it's mainly going to be his voice that's going to be heard, but the actions that follow behind his voice are going to really... Uh, 
diminish and slow down because he's now got that that check and balance that you know he he hadn't had for two years and so how this is going to relate to you know trade immigration um, economy business finance and our real estate market from the u.s perspective is is still going to be very unknown i think it's going to take a few months i think before we really understand how it will affect our economy but here's hoping that um you know our trade deals that we've worked out are to our benefit the canadian uh citizen benefit and that potentially we can even go and negotiate better trade deals or uh, have you know better economic ploy with companies to potentially start bringing companies back into canada because without jobs and without a healthy economy nothing really matters uh, when it comes to the real estate part so the next topic up for for discussion i wanted to uh to to talk about was the vancouver luxury housing market so i know this is more of a local podcast in the gta but it does affect sort of the global or sorry the canadian uh, economy and real estate market the vancouver luxury housing market drops from the world's hottest to absolute dead last and this is by brian uh, tensor i believe he's with huffington post and it's the business section of the huffington post this is an article he published on november 1st if there's anything vancouver's property market isn't it's average in fact looking it's looking increasingly like a land of extremes he goes on to talk about how a new report from a global realty firm knight frank ranks the city's luxury property market as the weakest among major cities worldwide and two years ago with that same index it had vancouver as the number one spot knight frank's prime cities residential index for the third quarter of 2018 so let's remember that this isn't over the you know the last two years this is now taking a snapshot of october it places vancouver 43rd out of 43 cities with luxury prices dropping a whopping 11.3 percent in the last year so on a million dollar property we're talking about hundred and eleven thousand dollars toronto ranks seventh and we actually saw an 8.5 percent growth over the same period singapore singapore took first place with 13.1 percent so we're five percent off the uh the top and um toronto continues to see prime prices rise in exclusive areas such as rosedale and yorkville the knight frank report uh cited vancouver however sits at the bottom of our rankings as up market areas such as west vancouver have seen a slowdown in sales and prices as a result of a raft of measures introduced in february's provincial budget so you can see how long it's taken you know for uh and not that it it's it's taken from february to now to have those measures really realized but you know six eight months uh later we're now starting to see that uh there's the implications good or bad from the policies introduced to slow down the real estate market uh, they're now starting to take effect that's just looking at luxury housing when looking at the overall market the two canadian cities reverse roles vancouver is in 10th place in knight frank's assessment of the entire housing market last month toronto saw a steep drop to 137th out of 150 cities down from first place last year we've dropped 137 uh, spots from being number one vancouver uh their housing market has been so quiet lately you can literally hear crickets chirp the report says the latest data from the city's real estate board says sales have fallen 43.5 percent in september from the same month a year earlier as well as uh sorry and are well below a long run average meanwhile fewer homes selling the supply has soared with 30 percent more homes for sale today than a year ago so vancouver it looks like has entered into a buyer's market it is prime if you're considering buying because prices are dropping and there's more inventory which gives you more options and quite frankly gives you more negotiation power um but other factors have taken uh more of a direct toll in vancouver's once hot real estate market the foreign buyers tax introduced in 2016 has reduced demand from abroad and new housing taxes introduced this year to keep potential buyers from entering the market um, 
so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with this Vancouver market. Finally, new mortgage rules introduced at the start of this year, so prior to February, effectively reduced the amount of home buyers and what they can borrow by about 20%. So if you could afford a $500,000 house, let's make numbers easy for everybody. If you could afford a million dollar house, your purchasing power, what you can afford now, is now down to about $800,000. So interesting report out of Vancouver. How it affects the Toronto real estate market is, is you know, we, we've, we're still seeing solid growth. Uh, our job economy is um, strong and there is a lot of positives coming out of the Toronto real estate market. I've been talking about it for a while now. I'd like to see a more balanced real estate market in uh, Toronto and the local GTA uh, being out of Burlington and Oakville. Uh, Oakville is absolutely crazy with you know an average housing price of a, a million two plus. Um, it takes the affordability for a majority of the population out of uh, the market <laughs> and you know no one no one's sitting around with uh, the, the purchasing power now of a million two because effectively you would have to be able to purchase a million five um, because that 20% decline in purchase power which is kind of crazy when you think about it and uh, the last item up for a discussion today uh, this is another Huffington Post business report Canadian home sales will fall over the next two years CMHC forecasts so it sounds like a little bit of doom and gloom today with talking about the Vancouver real estate market as well as uh, what CMHC is seeing, but it really isn't. It's actually really good if you're considering moving, and I'll, I'll explain after I, I talk with the article. The housing market will see moderation in the coming years. The government-run mortgage insurer says, the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation says the real estate market is expected to moderate over the next two years as growth in housing prices is expected to slow down more in line with economic fundamentals. I'll pause there. What What's happening is we've seen an explosive growth both in the number of sales and the price of homes, the price of condos um, in the last few years. The problem is, is that we haven't had the same increase with salaries for jobs. And if those two don't correlate with each other, if they're not step in step, it becomes a lot harder to purchase something uh, as prices increase, but your salary, your job, your 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 earnings don't. It also becomes more uh, difficult to save money and you know the purchasing power to buy things like a car or uh, household items, those things actually become a little bit more expensive in the long run. When we see a more balanced real estate economy, it kind of translates into a more balanced uh, market, balanced economy in general. It means you have the ability to purchase things not uh, that, that aren't out of your reach. So um, this article to me is not a negative, it's a positive. When you enter a balanced real estate market, you may not hit a home run with your house. Let's say it's worth half a million dollars, you're not gonna get $575,000 for it because there's no inventory. But that also helps you when you go to purchase a home too. You're not having to spend that extra you know, fifty to $75,000 to buy the house that you're moving to. So it all works out. You're gonna get 500 grand for your house and you're gonna spend $400,000 on that condo you're gonna purchase and not 450 or $475,000. Back to the article. In 2018, the housing market outlook released today, and this was released uh, on November 6th, depending on when you're listening. The National Housing Agency projects housing starts and sales are both expected to decline in 2019 and 2020. There's various factors for that. But uh, basically, there's just not the demand because of uh, restricted mortgage uh, rules. And uh, the government is also restricted by implementing a foreign uh, buyer's tax. There's a few things that have and are going to contribute to this demand. By 2020, CMHC anticipates demand will continue to shift towards relatively less excuse me, expensive housing options like apartment condos versus higher and single detached homes. What CMHC to me doesn't understand is that there's actually gonna be a lot more of a demand for these condos um, because a lot of people 
and the trend is uh, as our population ages are going to move to uh, a single uh, co- like single floor condo dwelling uh, homes. Also, we live in an on-demand society today. We live in a society today that no one wants to do anything other than you know do their work, come home, and enjoy their family. Well, that also includes things like uh, lawn maintenance, snow removal. Uh, so if you can move into a condo and not have those uh, those chores, uh, millennials and baby boomers are actually looking for that kind of market. So the condo market, while the single housing single family dwelling housing market will drop, detached uh, single family housing market, the condo market I think is going to stay extremely strong. So there's one thing I do disagree with the CMHC. Our forecast, over our forecast horizon, housing st- uh, starts are projected to decline from elevated levels recorded recently. Resales should also moderate while housing prices are expected to reach levels that are more in line with fundamentals, says Bob Duggan, chief economist at the CMHC. Um, so I, I think it's a good thing. I, th- I think entering into a more balanced real estate market is, uh, is something that we should hope for, strive for. Real estate sales are still going to be strong. People are still going to move. Uh, people are still going to get divorced. There's still going to be people that die. That you know, There's going to be a lot of things that c- contribute to our economy. Uh, and that sounded extremely morbid. I didn't mean for it to be that. But there's always economic factors that you know help the, the market, the real estate market, in terms of there's always going to be an opportunity for a buyer or a seller. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, that wasn't the last piece of news. I got one more thing. This is kind of relevant for everybody in Ontario. Canada Post is rotating strikes. The Canada Post rotating strikes have hit the country's largest processing center in Toronto for a second time in three weeks as workers in 17 other Ontario communities walked off the job just after midnight. This article is today. We are November 7th. The Canadian Union of Postal Workers says 4,500 Canada Post employees joined picket lines in Toronto at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday. That'd be November 6th. The QP, uh, sorry, the CUPW says that uh, was before workers in Chatham, Clinton, Georgetown, Milton, Orangeville, Port Hope, Stratford, Strathroy, Tilsonburg, Wingham, Woodstock, Belleville, Cornwall, Kingston, Brockville, Napanee, and Lindsay walked off the job early Wednesday, November 7th. Canada Post says in a statement that the union continues to escalate their strike activity, adding more communities each day and shutting down major processing centers for extended periods. Toronto facilities were shut down by the union for two consecutive days in October. Canada Post says there's no indication when the strike will end, adding it will worsen backlogs in mail and parcel deliveries across the country. If you're planning on throwing something in the mail, take into consideration that it may not get delivered when you think it will, and that uh, this strike doesn't look like it's going to slow down and uh, potentially even get larger. Um, I hope nothing but the best for Canada Post employees, but we do have Christmas season coming, probably the largest season for mailing uh, things I would suggest if I were you and you were planning on sending a present to me, <laughs> thank you very much. You don't need to. Uh, if you're planning on sending anything to relatives, family, friends, coworkers, anything like that, if you're planning on having it there for Christmas, I would send it at least one week early, if not two, as the strike seems to uh, not want to slow down. That is all for today's news and how it affects you with regards to the real estate economy and your life in Canada. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward, I really do, to coming back and having a conversation with you. If you have any questions, sold at kenparkin.com. Let's chat. Have a great day.